it's Dr. Mamari, and we are going to perform experiment four, uh, which is the extraction um, today. Uh, the type of extraction is the acid base extraction, and the chemicals that we are going to deal with today is a mixture of organic acid and organic neutral compounds. We are going to um, dissolve both compounds or the mixture in uh, ether, which is a good solvent that dissolves all um, acids and or most of the organic compounds, because um, that's the, the ether is a polar um, and is a good organic solvent. It would dissolve in ether first, then we are using sodium hydroxide as the extracting solvent. Our extracting solvent, sodium hydroxide, would react with the organic acid and brings the acid into the aqueous layer in a separated funnel. And we drain that aqueous layer, we collect, we, we separate. I will explain more as I'm performing the experiment. First, we are going to measure about 0.5 grams of um, organic acid, which I'm using the benzoic acid for that, which is the veiling paper, and the pear, because I don't need the mass of the veiling paper. I would add enough, um, enough of sample to make it about 0.5, about 0.5 of the sample. And point 0.5 of the sample, it's slight, a little bit more, that's okay. Uh, as long as I record that mass exactly to the point 0.01 uh, number, which for you, I'm going to post this picture image of it uh, for you to report the exact number of the gram of benzoic acid. I will transfer that into transfer that into small aromatic flask. It's a, sometimes you can use funnel or make a funnel from the vein paper and carefully transfer without spilling any of the chemicals uh, chemicals out. So you just basically make a paper funnel here and measure 0.5 gram of organic neutral compound. The organic neutral compound, which I'm going to use today, is uh, fluorine, is an alkene, and I would measure um, about 0.5 gram of the fluorine. Now we have about 0.5 and We'll also include the image. And I will transfer that into the same aromer flask that I have my organic acid. So I have mixture of organic acid and organic neutral compound. I would dissolve this first using ether. So I'm going to measure, I will measure 15 milliliters of the ether following the procedure inside the fume hood. Using a graduate cylinder. And adjust the last drops with the with the drop with the 15 milliliters of the ether. I try to dissolve the sample in ether and transfer to a um, separatory uh, funnel. So you have to also learn in this experiment how to use the separatory uh, funnel. 
I'm going to cover this with the dissolve and cover it because I don't want the ether to evaporate while I am trying to explain you how to use the separatory funnel. You want to make sure the separatory funnel, it functions properly. That means the stop coat does not leak. So we are going to add some water and while the stop coat is, is uh, closed. How do you know the stop coat is closed? Simply in horizontal position, it's closed, vertical position is, is open. I want to make sure that when I open the stop coke, the liquid is going to actually leave the, leave the separatory funnel. If there is any problem, I need to figure out before I place the ether mixture or my solution, ether solution in there. Um, the glass stopper that I have, it has to be properly uh, greased because when I am working with the separatory funnel, I hold the separatory funnel with two hands and I have the two layers. I have my solution plus the extracting solvent in the uh, uh, separatory funnel. Then I hold it like this by pushing or placing the, the uh, glass stopper against the palm of my hand and I shake it. And if it's not greased properly, there the liquid is going to leak out of this. And I cannot afford that. I cannot have chemicals on my hands. So I want to make sure that the glass stopper is properly um, greased before I use it. Now, making sure, uh, making sure that the stop coat is closed, I would transfer the uh, solution of the ether with the chemical into the separatory funnel. Some of the um, sample still is in the in the flask, you can see that it turns kind of cloudy around it when the ether evaporates. So I'm using five more milliliters of the ether to wash the separate the Erlenmeyer flask to make sure that everything from the, the flask is transferred into the separatory funnel. About five milliliters, it's good enough. And I will put it like through the wall of the flask to assure that all leftover of the chemical has been washed or dissolved in the ether, and I will transfer into the separatory funnel. Now, I can close this using um, grease glass stopper. The size of the the supporting ring, it's very important. We cannot use any iron ring here. You can't just put any iron ring and then try to place your separatory funnel. It's going to drop. So you want to make sure the size of the, the ring you are using, the iron ring you are using, which is supported by the stand is proper size. You can put tape around the, um, you know, in few spots of this, this ring, uh, or a piece of cut tubing um, to, to even decrease the size or use this as kind of a cushion. And also we have like a receiving uh, container. The receiving container based on the procedure, it says 150 milliliter beaker, which I'm going to use the 150 milliliter beaker. The height of the ring is important. I cannot put it too high up. Because later on, when I'm trying to drain the, the, the liquid, this is like very loose, it's not clapped, it's just placed in the ring and it can go around and the liquid can spill out of the container. So proper height for um, separatory funnel 
is in a way that is going to give me warning. Let's say now I'm, I'm touching this. As soon as it starts moving around, it's going to hit, hit the glass. It's going to give me a warning. Be careful, it's moving around. So I just put the tip of the um, separatory uh, funnel for the, you know, for the drain just inside the, the receiving flask. Now, my receiving flask can be a Erlenmeyer flask or it could be uh, a beaker. If, it's, if, it's, uh, if the lower level is aqueous layer and I'm collecting, it's okay to use beaker. If the lower level has or is an organic level or it's like methylene chloride is my organic solvent and it's heavy, heavier than aqueous layer. So I'm draining out the lower level. I have to put into a um, Erlenmeyer flask. So um, both of them is good. Often Erlenmeyer flask is used, but if the um, layer that I'm draining and collecting and receiving class is aqueous layer, beaker is, is fine. So now I have the acid and neutral organic compound dissolved in ether. It's not extracted yet. I'm going to add the uh, sodium hydroxide, the 10 milliliter of the sodium hydroxide using the procedure in the lab manual for the second layer to form, basically sodium hydroxide would react with the benzoic acid and changes to sodium benzoate, which is the soluble salt of the organic acid and brings it to the aqueous layer. Going to quickly measure the, the sodium hydroxide and bring it to add to the separatory funnel. Okay, here is the sodium hydroxide solution. I'm going to add 10 milliliter of the solution following the procedure and transfer into the, I'm going to take the 10 milliliter of sodium hydroxide and transfer into the uh, separatory funnel. When you work in group of two, one person needs to be uh, worry about the chemicals you need for the next step and one person would do the experiment. So you always have the chemical you need for the next step at your, um, at your um, station. So you see that the second layer has formed, but this gentle pouring of the sample in is not going to react or fully react with the, uh, with the organic acid. So I have to make sure that there is enough like collisions or contact between the two compounds, the acid and base, for it to react. So I'm going to shake this a few times and uh, it's going to build up a lot of pressure because ether, okay, when I shake the separated funnel, um, even though there is no reaction here that would produce like carbon dioxide gas, the ether, it can evaporate and it's going to build up pressure. So as you shake, you must vent the uh, separatory funnel. This action is called venting. That means releasing the pressure from the, uh, from the separatory funnel. By holding the separatory funnel, inside the fume wind because you don't want that vapor to go to your face or someone else's face and pointing it toward the fume wind, open the stopcock and close before you put it right side up. Now, after like three times shaking, venting, I can place it back on the iron ring and let the two layers separate completely. You might see it already, the two layers, but we are going to leave it under it to make sure that those two layers are separated completely. When the separatory funnel is resting, you must remove the glass stopper. This is going to allow the separation to take place faster. That's one reason. The second reason, if the stopper is closed and you try to open the, uh, if the glass stopper is on and you try to open the, the stopcock, it would create vacuum and the liquid does not drain off easily. 
So for both reasons, we are going to remove the glass stopper. When the two layers form, like clean paper, when the two layers form, just going to bring it like a close up for you to see the two, uh, two layers. What would make it easier for you to see? So the two layer has formed, both of them are colorless, but if by careful looking, observing this, you could see that two, a two layer has formed. And to separate the lower level, just carefully, you're going to open the, yeah, carefully, you're going to open the stopper and let the aqueous layer to be drained off without bringing any of the organic layers. So as soon as you see the organic layers getting close, you have to stop draining. Now, extraction, one extraction is not going to be effective for separation. Thank you.